Oh, I love me some videos like these, and I hope that you will enjoy it as well. I'm going to debunk several questions when it comes to Dendrobium nobile care, focusing on the back and forth regarding winter rest, not watering, fertilizing during winter, and late into the summer, risk of cakeys or successful blooming, all that back and forth, and prove what I'm saying, not just with a hybrid nobile that we know has been bred for vigor and abundant blooming, but also a species Dendrobium nobile. And this has nothing to do with how I prefer to cultivate my orchids, but applies across the board, no matter your choice of media or setup. Seeing as there will be some reading involved as I go through the frequently asked questions, with the mainstay of answers, please already give this video a thumbs up and your vote of confidence by subscribing to the channel will be greatly appreciated as well. Thank you so much. So, the first frequently asked question is, should I continue winter rest and if so, how long? The common answer is, sure, continue cool and dry winter care. If the nubbins turn out to be cakeys, then at that point you can slowly transition winter care to standard growing care. Careful with that statement. Even though it doesn't make sense, but I'm not going to tear into that, we're just going to keep debunking. But you see, cakeys for the most part grow higher up on the canes and with that, they're the roots will not reach the media in order to grow into the pot in order to take up nutrients. So, if your nobly is growing cakeys, then monitor the canes of your nobly orchids. If they start to shrivel a little bit, give the orchids some water to maintain the health of the canes. This only applies, of course, if you're cultivating your Dendrobium nobile in a wet dry cycle culture, no matter if you're growing in organic or inorganic media. Please remember, I will prove my basic explanations as I debunk the standard answers. It will all come together in the end, and that is the plan anyway. <laughs> Continuing on with the culture of Dendrobium nobile orchids, the following question usually comes right after the first one that floats around. Should I continue the cool winter rest, even though the nubbins appear to be progressing into spikes, but it's still too early to be 100% sure? And then you get the answer. If the nubbins are flowers, or you can't tell yet, then continue with the cool winter rest. That answer in itself makes me scratch my head, but let's analyze it and make sense of it. No matter what is coming from your canes, if it is too early to identify what is going to be growing, you still have to let your orchid be your guide. Many times you will hear the following as a follow-on reasoning, and I quote, because it's not unreasonable to continue winter care well into late winter, early spring, unquote. However, always keep in mind the complex hybrids are bred for vigor and continuous growth so that they will bloom well. Because they are mass-produced, similar to Phalaenopsis orchids, the individual winter resting traits are pretty much bred out of them. So if you see your canes shriveling early winter, do not deny your nobly orchids water. Denying water will stress your orchid out. And then come early spring, you will see more cakeys than blooms because the orchid thinks she's in trouble and that she will not survive the drought and start pushing cakeys in order to secure its kind, should the mother plant not make it because of the drought. Moving on to the next most popular question, my coolest temperatures are XYZ degrees, can I water my orchid a little bit? Clearly that applies once again to the wet dry cycle culture, and the answer would be, standard, the cooler your temperatures, the drier your conditions should be. Well, that statement should always be followed with, depending what your Dendrobium nobile is doing, and I hope you're seeing a pattern coming together already. I will, however, break the winter care down for different cultures so that my setup doesn't prompt any confusion. In a wet dry cycle culture, reducing water can help the orchid through colder temperatures, but if you have conditions that are steady and there isn't a radical temperature drop that the orchid cannot tolerate because those trends temperatures will be too low for them, then complex hybrids will end up being continuous growers. And not just the complex hybrids. I have a nobly species that behaves exactly the same way and started new growths well into fall of the previous year. But I will get into that. I'm going to continue with the blanket statements about nobly orchids so that you won't be left in doubt whether to water fertilize no matter if it's fall, winter, spring or late into the summer. Just a little side note, 
I'm going to point out something that comes with the territory when growing Dendrobium nobilis. If your nobili is dropping leaves, then that is nothing to worry about if the leaves are dropping from older canes. These orchids are also referred to as semi-deciduous Dendrobiums, so dropping leaves does not signal that you should stop watering no matter the time of year. As a matter of fact, the leaves on nobili orchids drop a leaf every once in a while during their growing season, and we are watering them heavily during this time of the growing phase. And as you can see, my species nobili is still holding on to a lot of leaves on older canes just the same as my complex hybrid. The loss of the occasional leaf is a normal phase of the orchid's growth habit. Please do not force your nobili into any kind of rest to make the leaves drop with the assumption the rest period has begun. Instead, ensuring that your nobili has healthy leaves for as long as possible is the best course of action because they photosynthesize and produce energy energy for the orchid. Before I go on to the next popular question that is often a concern for many growers and comes with a lot of confusion, let's go back and elaborate a little on the third question and talk about what is considered a gradual reintroduction of water to the orchid. And gradual based on what? Oh yes, the hard dry winter rest which we just debunked earlier. Because, remember we stated that the orchid should not be denied water throughout the colder conditions, instead there should always be a little access to water throughout the cooler months of the year in order to keep the canes plump and healthy. So, if you see new growth starting at the base, you don't have to do gradual anything. You are ready to respond to your orchid coming into active growth and fertilize straight away to promote the new growth and grow them as large as the age of the orchid will allow. With what we just stated in mind, you will also come to the conclusion that you do not need to wait for the blooming to finish in order to start fertilizing. Which brings me to the fourth question that growers usually want some help with, and that is, when do I stop fertilizing? to prevent the orchid from growing keikis. The most standard answer is don't fertilize your orchid too late into the summer, huh? You see how this answer is a non-answer? What would determine a late summer? An Indian summer in some climates? That could be October, which falls under fall, or end of August for some climates. So in order to put all doubt aside, stop fertilizing when the canes are fully matured, not just with their terminal leaf, but that they are also nice and plump. Once a Dendrobium nobili produces a terminal leaf, the cane may have stopped growing in height, but that is when the cane starts to put on some size around the middle. And if in achieving that, you continue to fertilize well into early fall, then so be it. Your orchid will be stronger and thank you for it because it does not have to pull any nutrients from the older structures in order to provide the new growth with the energy it is going to need for the blooming phase. And by golly, if your nobly starts to grow new growths when you least expect it, either continue fertilizing or start the moment you see the new growths, be it during winter or the orchid is still in bloom or the canes only show nubbins, no matter what. No matter the calendar season, if your nobody starts a new growth, I highly recommend that you follow its lead and provide for that new growth with fertilizer and supplements and ignore the time of year. The statement that keikis form if the nobilis are fertilized too late in the summer is debunked just by looking at my species and complex hybrid. I pushed new growths on both of them with fertilizer and the usual suspects of supplements throughout the winter and have not stopped doing so at the time of filming. My nobilis have not stopped being in active growth since early spring of 2023, both the species and the hybrid. And yes, I do emphasize that I have a species as a comparison orchid because once again hybrids are bred for vigor and have the tendency to behave differently to species while a species orchid will usually follow a strict pattern of active growth rest and blooming and so on and so forth for that reason i am so glad that i have the species to prove to you that they are both behaving the same way now you may say that is because you grow in semi-hydroponics the roots are always wet, giving the orchid the signal that there is no rest period and it can just grow, and you are absolutely correct with that observation. Which proves another point and debunks the hard dry winter rest, reducing water, and the question, can I give my nobly a little bit of water here and there? But, hold on a second, I still have super low winter temperatures that these orchids have to contend with, and usually it is a temperature drop that will signal the orchid it is time to stop growing new growths. 
These two live outside all year round, and my previous winter was not any milder than the preceding years. My noblies know no difference since they arrived on the patio and have not produced cakeys since they acclimated. They have always bloomed right on time and abundantly like clockwork. Having had the complex hybrid since 2018 and the species since 2021, the fall of 2023 was the first time that I saw both my complex hybrid and species start new growths when normally they are not expected to. Because, of course, winter rest. Well, I'm a big proponent of if the orchid is growing new growth at a time when it is not expected to, then who am I to force the orchid to rest, to not fertilize and not encourage the new growths to grow to their maximum, no matter what the time of year what I think the orchid should be doing. So I always push new growths. Even if the growths were not to grow to size because of their untimely development, at least they will produce new roots, which in turn adds to the strength of the orchid in question. As orchids have three phases, of care, those being rested, active growth and blooming, if during the phase of one new growth maturing while in bloom, these orchids then decide to push out new growths again, then I'm not stopping them from doing that and highly recommend you shouldn't either. New growths, no matter what we think the orchid should or shouldn't do, orchids know better and with that we need to care for them based on what they are doing and not what we think they should be doing. So I'm extremely thrilled to be able to show you my examples, even a species, not just a complex hybrid, has deviated from what is considered the norm. And I fertilized the two of them throughout the entire winter. I totally ignored the weather conditions, the low temperatures. Instead, I continued the care as per the active growth seasonal care for my orchids. The growths did not stop growing. They are still in the process of continued growth. The nubbins turned into spikes, which are in amazing bloom, and both orchids are now also starting their new growth as per the time of year, which here in southern Spain is currently early spring. So now imagine what we are in for for the spring of 2025. Or how about this for being on continued Dendrobium Nobili Watch? Will the canes that started in late fall of 2023 bloom throughout the winter of 2024 once they have matured? Or will it be in spring of 2025 because they are going to need that temperature drop in order to bloom? Is there another debunking video in our future? If you have not subscribed to the channel, this would be a good time to do so to follow the what will happen next. And I would like to hear your take on when will the winter canes bloom? Because I would like to know if your nobly also start their active growth when it is supposed to go into winter rest. No matter your setup, no matter your media. When did your nobly bloom from the canes that grew during the cooler months of the year, the unexpected time of year? If this is something you have insight on, I really would love to hear from you. The takeaway from this video is do not deny your nobly orchids water during the winter. And if your orchid is in active growth, do not deny your orchid any fertilizer. Do not force your orchid to do something because that is what it is supposed to do now and deny your orchid growing new structures just because the calendar deems it to be necessary. Always remember when it comes to caring for your nobly is that you are their caretaker, not their enforcer. If this were to turn out to be a one-off event, then so be it. But know that actively growing nobly orchids should be cultivated according to what is happening and not what is supposed to happen as per frequently asked questions and the answers that come with those questions, which may not even be relevant because they do not pertain to your conditions. Was this risky? I'm glad you asked. Not for me, it wasn't again. I prefer new growth, new roots. And then if I had forfeited this blooming because I went all in with fertilizer during the winter, then I would not have had that big of a problem with it because I now have more growths to start the season with than I would have had if they had not started these growths in late fall. More roots. <laughs> And my orchids are going to need a bigger pot, <laughs> but not in 2024. There's too many other big projects that need attention, but you see where I'm getting at. At least I hope so. And I hope that if you were ever in any doubt whatsoever, the general statements on care, watering and fertilizing are officially debunked. Yay! 
And if this was a light bulb moment for you, then imagine it possibly being a light bulb moment for others. Meaning, please share the video and make the cultivation of Dendrobium nobilis even easier for other orchid aficionados. Thank you so much for watching. Know that you're appreciated for staying to the end. And because of that, I get to wish you a fabulous day on the condition though that you stay safe. Bye.